My very special guest today on the red couch as we continue to celebrate women within our society, trailblazers, my dear friend, and someone I've always admired for her outstanding work in our community, none other than the chair of the BTMI, she is Shelley Williams. I don't want to tell you how much of a challenge it has been with her schedule, getting her to sit down here on the red couch. So we're going to get right into it this morning. I sent her a message about 4 a.m. this morning, reminding her not to wear red because we're going to be on the red couch. Oh, you know, and red is my favorite color, by the way. <laughs> One of mine, too, as well, you know. So delighted to have you here, Shelley. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I know that your business um, is celebrating this year 25 years. Yes, that's And great. I want to start there um, because you're a self-made woman in your own right. Uh, of course, you are married to one of the most important people in Barbados, the most honorable Ralph Busy Williams. And so um, living in that shadow, that's a big shadow that to cast there. That's true. Uh, and for you to carve out your own identity and so on, um, I'm sure that uh, people would say all kinds of silly things. But you know and I know that you have also made a name in business yes. on your own. So tell me a little bit, because your business is very unique. And when I talk to other friends um, in the Caribbean, and I tell them about this service, they say, we, but we don't have that. <laughs> You know. Well, maybe that's going to be my next 25 years. <laughs> we'll be spent doing it outside of Barbados. Um, yes, uh, all those things are, are when we're coming out of um, International Women's Day. And um, you made a comment just now about um, being in the shadow of uh, a, great a great man. man. Mm-hmm. And um, you know what? I never think about it, of being in his shadow. Mm-hmm. I think of me pushing him along the way and you know the saying does go behind every great man Uh Mm -hmm. Uh and um so it's good because i have learned a lot from him in those last in these years 20 years of being together um in business already yes in business and otherwise (laughs) um my my service is a very unique one i i started it um before i met busy um it is one that is now, I would like to say it's now relevant. Mm, you it's know, time it's, has it's come. time has, has come. Yeah. And I think in COVID, most people then got to know what I did for a living through COVID because we played a very, you know, we, we well, opened up played, the airport. You, you played more than, than <laughs> a, a vital role because a lot of your role, and you, you, know, you won't say this, but I will say it because at, at the time I was chair of the Grantley Adams Airport. But you volunteered. You took on responsibilities that nobody really had assigned you to. Mm-hmm. So I thought it was very brave on many fronts because from a health standpoint, you were risking taking a big risk, yes. you know, exposing yourself in a way in which you didn't have to. But I saw you, um, I have to confess, I was standing a distance away for safety too as well because <laughs> we didn't know what we were dealing with. But you were right, you jumped right into it, Shelley, and you took charge of that thing almost as if it was your own project. Yes, and why? Um, we, the world was going through this thing all at the same time, and Barbados and Barbadians didn't know what to expect, especially from a tourist. And um, that day, we, we were opening, reopening with an Air Canada flight. Mm-hmm. Who was going to meet Air Canada? And what experience were they going to have? Now, we, are, we specialize in luxury. And so the hardest part was trying to convince my team that two had families and were, you know, and had young children. And um, they decided, yep, well, boss, if you, if you think we can do it, let's do it. Three of them didn't. Three of them sent their letters of resignation, said, I'm gone, bye, I'm changing this, my job. Um, but majority of them did come along with me for the ride. And we learned so much. And I, it was good because then the average Barbadian got to see what it is that we do and we offer the type of service we offer to um, the luxury market in, in tourism. You say luxury, but yet, and, and, and I'm not bougie, but I find that it is very affordable. Yes. And I think you have made, while, while this quality of the service is luxury, um, for me, the pricing is worth every penny of that, you know, that meet and greet. You come on a long flight and there's somebody there with your name 
as you're about to enter the arrivals hall yes. and they take charge and, and help you through the whole process. Yes, and um, I'm, it was funny because when we started doing that in Barbados, do you know there were no other places in, in that I knew in the outside in the UK, US and other places and spaces that were doing it. And um, within now, fast forward to 2025, you can have this service in UK, in the US, in, yes, all over the world, Dubai. So it is a special service that everybody now looks forward to. So it is affordable. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is very affordable. Thank you very much for yeah. that plug. Rebecca um, Fernandez doesn't want to travel now unless I make arrangements. <laughs> she was coming in recently late from Miami at night and, and had the nerve to ask me, have you arranged? Um, and I said, Rebecca, you really don't need that. I'm sure everybody at the airport wants to get out and get home. You'll be fine without it on one occasion. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Poor <laughs> Becky. Yeah. <laughs> but it is, it is uh, fast forward, um, a mm -hmm. really... Um, uh, essential service at now mm -hmm. and people feel that they just like Rebecca feel like that is part of their travel they just don't want the woes of the airport anymore yeah you know when I tell my friends in and I, I mentioned one country in St. Lucia you know you, they go like what you know what what you know they they, they yeah. can't and, and everybody at the same time everybody sees but well, this is a what a great what a fabulous idea <laughs> And yet, you know, um, and that's one of the things I suppose that sets Barbados apart in, many, in many respects. Absolutely. Yeah. And we have always been that, that island that sets the trend and sets, sets the, the bar and sets the bar yeah. and so even something like a, a meet and assist at the airport a fast track service that shows you the level of, of clientele we want for Barbados as well as the level of service deliverance that we expect and, and, and of course that service runs right through it's just not just you meet and agree but you can actually come into your office your re reception area yes, relax a little bit absolutely. then you've got your the, the transportation yes. everything is laid on yes. I mean it really is very a very very cool service yes it you is know? and yeah. um, you know coming into my role as chair of, of tourism many many people are questioned whether or not well does she know anything about tourism and I thought it very funny <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was quite funny uh, just a little bit just a wee bit <laughs> So, so on the theme of inclus um, inclusion and inclusivity, um, with not only looking at women, but in tourism, we need to have a voice of inclusivity. So it can't only be hoteliers um, setting the trend for tourism because there's so many businesses that derive a living from tourism Absolutely. that are unique services that we cannot do without and it's not just a hotel. So you can build a hotel, but then what does your client do? Uh, they stay at the hotel, but then what? They still want to come out and have those unique experiences. And that's why, um, you know, having that inclusion and that uh, including me in the tourism product, I'm very happy about that because then I bring another perspective, the service behind, the tourism service behind tourism. And when we talk tourism, we agree. Uh, we are not unique in terms of having beaches and sun and sea. Um, all over the Caribbean you can get that. But when you look at Barbados' tourism product, we have some really unique things. Look at the championship world-class golf courses that we have in Barbados. There is no country in the Eastern Caribbean that comes even close, remotely close uh, to, to Barbados' offering. Horse racing. Yes. I mean... Uh, the, the, the Sandy Lane Gold Cup at the Garrison is a world-class event. Absolutely. Um, Ascot really has nothing on it. I can tell you. I think we got some things on them, <laughs> you know, because we bring an energy and so on. Absolutely. It is, I'm not a big horse racing fan, but I wouldn't miss Gold Cup for anything I, under the sun. It I is agree. just a, an experience, you know. And we, we add all of these layers, you know, our world-class cricket facilities, the... the, the um, the, the Bushy Park race track. I mean, when I take friends up there, Shelley, and show them that, they go like, wow. And there's so much more to be done in short term. We're now going to be doing the Formula E um, racing. That's in Barcelona. Those are in big 
spaces and we're going to have that in Barbados uh, shortly so uh, Barbados is doing uh, yeah phenomenal things, great phenomenal. things great things. So, so would you agree then that it's not just you know like the the traditional things about sea and sand and so on but there's the heritage tourism we yes. haven't even touched on that the, you know the train the rums the tours and all of the other elements that make up the experience absolutely mm. um th the authentic you know we, ha we used to have a slogan on i don't want to touch on the slogan That's but we right. used to have a slogan <laughs> called the authentic and i think every caribbean island had it the authentic caribbean mm. but the authentic experience of barbados is what we have been that's what people are, are coming for mm. that's that they love it especially the culinary experience for barbados oh absolutely barbados is one is very very unique in 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 terms of its product offering culinary product offering if you want to dress up and put on your jimmy choos and go to the cliff you can do so mm -hmm. if you want to put on some flip-flops come right off the beach and go to oysters or any of those casual dining so we have from each scale from every scale you can eat on the beach and have your feet in the sand you can have it on the water in the catamaran or you can you can um, dress it all up and and come or have it in a mall setting like where we are at lime grove and have a great croissant from the new french red thing so it, it is amazing what we offer and the diversity in what we offer and i think that that is uh when when people had to ask me about dining out in barbados um i remind them i said you know there is something for every budget. Yes. Doesn't matter where you are. Yes. Whether it's a cutter from Cuz, or the new one down in Spites Town, yes. um, or it is some a fish cake experience, yep. or you want, as you just said, the fine dining with all of the you know the service and the girls in their long flowing evening dresses <laughs> and Lovely. so on. I mean, it's 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 really a very special experience. And for 166 square miles. I don't know 166 square miles anywhere else in the world that probably has as much diversity and choices. Yep. And don't forget the gas stations <laughs> because there are some gas stations. Very that, important. That are, <laughs> the food. You know, it's really the food in some of them, you know, it's, it's remarkable. You go in, I mean, it's, it's really phenomenal when, you, yes. when one thinks about yes. it, yes. you know. Um, so in your, in your You've led um, now the BTMI through uh, that whole, some, uh, some difficult challenges coming out of COVID and so on, getting us our brand back up, getting the numbers where you want them to be, in, improving airlift and so on. How do you, where you sit now, I know you will never be comfortable with what you have, <laughs> but um, how are you feeling about where we are um, in, on, on the tourism front right now? You know, um, we're happy that most people are happy with our, or I could say Barbadians are happy with our performance, but we never have time to think about it. We, we're on to the next uh, trade show, we're on to the next opportunity, we're, we're, we're still traveling and, and, and looking at what's next for Barbados as we build it out. Um, having a year round for us, uh, we have gotten back to our 20, 2019 numbers in most cases, sometimes surpass it. But we now need to look at um, what is next, a year-round destination. That's what we're working on, being able to have um, tourists on the island all year round and not just we are wonderful for winter and then suffer in summer and people have to be furloughed in summer or they have to find something else to do we have to find that customer the right customer which will be our summer customer and and they're out there and now it's time to pay attention to that and that's mm. what we've been working on now of course the caribbean has to be featured in that mix too as Absolutely. well you know and we've suffered because of the demise of uh, liat uh, that left a gap, but that seems to be getting filled up um, very quickly and strategically. Mm. Um, and what we what happened, you know, Barbados was the hub for Liat, and we had a connectivity to Northern Caribbean and and all around the Eastern and Southern Caribbean. Um, obviously, when that went out, we it was a deficit, and we felt it. The numbers. Um, the numbers, the significant fall off of those numbers uh, was troubling to us. Mm -hmm. So. 
People ask, why Cayman Airways? Why Bahamas Air? Why Suriname Airways? Um, why, why are you investing in those type of airlines? Why are you wasting our... No, it's not. It can never be. We are working with all our partners to grow the Caribbean product, and we're working with Inter-Caribbean. We're working, of course, with Caribbean Airlines. They're building out as much as they can. They have a capacity issue as well. They have to get more planes. What do we do? The grass, you know, the whilst the grass is growing, the horse is starving. Mm-hmm. So we still needed to go out there and find our connectivity, and um, so we wanted to connect northern so that we can open up uh, Jamaica, Cuba once more. Um, through Cayman, people kept asking, "Well, nobody wants to go to Cayman." No, I don't believe that because. Um, People will visit Cayman or they will use it as a transit city. Um, Bahamas Air came and helped us when we were having connectivity problems with, with not connectivity problems, but the lack of seats to go to Miami. We could not get out to Miami. And when we were getting out to Miami, it was costing us in excess of Mm -hmm. $3,000. And so they came and played a role during summer to allow people to come to Barbados at a decent price using another gateway, which is Fort Lauderdale. And that gateway was... I love that gateway, by the way. I know everybody does. Don't worry. we uh, Soon. (laughs) (laughs) Soon come. (laughs) Soon come. That is important. And especially for the diaspora, that is a very important um, gateway for mm. us and um, so we, we are going to be working on that and um, and then going south we, then going we now south, have Panama we, with Copa I mean Copa. I remember when Copa well when they started and now we are up to what four flights a week and Absolutely. who knows may soon be daily when who knows? we first started yeah. that relationship nobody was going to Panama we had stopped going to Panama like oh we had stopped going to to um, Puerto Rico years ago, mm, you know, mm. we had stopped. And now we have fallen back in love with Panama. Oh, I, I, I absolutely. And, you know, we at Capital Media, I can take a little bit of the shine here now too as well. Absolutely. You know, we, we, we believe that that promotion we ran last year, absolutely. which we're going to run again shortly, really lifted because uh, we, we sent not just, not just the winners, but we sent Kirk Brown um, and Kirk being bilingual. Kirk went and took over a radio station there one afternoon, man, and lit the place up. We sent uh, one of our videographers set ahead of the team to shoot stuff and so on. And Very the important. interest, um, I, had, I had someone call me and say to me, you know, Vic, I, because of that promotion and all that you guys did and showed, I recently got married and I decided to, we decided to spend our honeymoon in Panama. And they went to Panama. Absolutely. You know? so. And as a result, I'll take it a step further. We just celebrated, um, we just announced that the embassy, uh, Panama embassy, is going to be opening here in Barbados. That is where yes. this goes. So yeah. it, it might at first say, Oh, you may be wasting tourism dollars or yeah. you're wasting taxpayers' dollars. And, the, and, and it takes time to Cast develop. your bread on the water. That's yeah. right. Yeah. It takes time to develop. Absolutely. Now, these two countries are working hand in hand, as we did many, many in our history. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. and people are visiting. They're visiting us. Their flights are full coming mm-hmm. and their flights are full going with Barbadians. Because we also recognize that Panama is a great place to shop. What? <laughs> it's also a gateway to Latin America. Absolutely. Um, and that's, that's a big thing. I have a trip planned personally to Costa Rica. And again, I'm going through. So even if I didn't have a U.S. visa, I could go to Panama and I could, I could connect. And those are strategic yeah. things that we look at uh, when we're d- discussing airlift mm. and connectivity. How does one get to, and, and Cayman was very similar to that too. Mm. How do we get to these places without a feeling that we have to go through the U.S.? Jamaicans now can go through and Cubans can go through Cayman to access Barbados, Guyana, and, 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 and the other uh, Eastern Caribbean. And they could not do that before if they did not have a visa to go through the U.S. Right. Because the only connectivity was through the U.S. We need to connect the Caribbean without having to use the U.S. to do so. And there's such cultural links, as we mentioned, with Panama, so strong. I remember years ago uh, going to Panama for a Miss Universe show. And I was sitting waiting for my business partner 
to come down. And I saw this concierge manager and he had the name Griffith on his shirt. And I thought I detected a tinge of Barbadian accent in his English. <laughs> and I said, he's got to be Bajan. But why is a Bajan doing out here? <laughs> because to get there, I had to, we had to go up to Miami and then mm -hmm. come down. Yes. Anyway, when his, the lull uh, came around, I went up to him and I said, by the way, are you Barbadian? And he laughed. He said, no, but I am a descendant of Barbadians. Yes. My grandfather came here for the Panama Canal and so on. I said, do you have family? And he said, oh, absolutely. And I come to Barbados frequently. I said, and that would be St. Lucie, wouldn't it be? And he said, how do you know? I said, Griffith. I said, if your name is Griffith and you're authentic Barbadian, yeah. I think your roots are definitely going to be in St. Lucie. Mm -hmm. And we had a really great conversation. So we know that there are these um, historical links going back the last century with, with Panama. So in a sense, we are, we are re, and that's why we called our promotion Rediscover Panama. Absolutely. You know? yeah. So you're going to have to do a Rediscover Africa soon. Oh, absolutely. Watch out for that. Well, well um, <laughs> I shouldn't say this, uh, but let me, let me just say that preliminary talks have taken place. Okay. Uh, we, leave it, we leave it at that uh, because I don't want to give my competitors too much information. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Likewise. So Shelly, as you look, uh, you know, you, you have been so hugely successful in, in, in all that you have done. Um, I remember the days when uh, getting ready to come out of COVID, we were having these meetings. We had a few meetings at, um, in, in, in the gap yeah. uh, that went on. I remember one evening, there was a, a, a little mini conference that took place in one of our cars right there in the, in the yeah. car park that must have lasted about an hour and a half. True. You know, people don't know about these things that go yeah. on behind the scenes, yeah, but as you look at your, your career and your achievements and so on, um, I don't get the sense that you're planning to slow down. So I'm going to ask you both in terms of your own personal goals and your, your, your role as the chair of BTMI, what, what do you see for the future? Well, my pers personally, <laughs> personally, I am going to slow down. <laughs> Um, I, my intention is to, um, if my minister keeps the board mm -hmm. um, as it is, my intention would be to definitely see to, to having Af the links with Africa, have more links uh, coming through, have more connectivity coming through the Caribbean, um, keeping Barbados as, as that hub that most important hub for every airline if you're coming into the Eastern Caribbean and, um, and growing a, a year-round destination. So for me, that's my chairman goal. Um, I also have another chairman goal. I want to change how the office space looks and feels. I feel like I, I'm in a beautiful office here. Um, with creativity, I find a lot of our offices still look uh, like those traditional mm. cubicles, sterile, sterile mm. kind of office. And that's not you. And I mm. would love to see it in a more creative space, mm -hmm. uh, um, green spaces, spaces that allow women also to have their children. Um, if the children come in in the afternoon, they're working late, they don't have to worry about them. They have a, a, a special area where their children can still do like an aftercare at the at the facility, at the office. I just want to build out and change the look and feel of the BTMI office um, to grow that creativity. And I think marketers need to have that, that mm -hmm. green space, that healthy space Absolutely. to work and, and to strive. So that is my chairman goal. Shelley Williams' goal. I can tell you what my husband would like. He would like me to come Stop home. home. <laughs> He would like me to come home now because he has retired in his form of retirement. So I think um, I, I'm, I'm pledging another two years to my life, hopefully, to tourism and see into the build out of tourism. And then I will definitely come home and, and, and give him, go on give that him what he wants. Yes, go on the boat and sail a little bit and relax and Lovely. enjoy our home. Lovely, absolutely. <laughs> well, you know what you mentioned about the nursery, uh, something I did about 20 years ago at really? Starcom Network, uh, because I had noticed that a number of the female staff were, um, you know, under pressure in the afternoons, and then there were kids coming and they were running around the office, and we had a space out at the back, 
and I called in some architects who did a nice little job and did a loft and we put in bedding that they could lie and sleep on, put a TV in and some little chairs and tables and so on. And so suddenly people were in there six, seven o'clock in the evenings because they knew they're okay. All right. And we had one of I the housekeeping staff supervise and made sure. Absolutely. You know? So, yeah, we were we were probably ahead of our time. You uh, always uh, were ahead uh, of your uh, time. On that occasion, <laughs> on that occasion. My last question to you, uh, Shelley, today, um, and, and I hope that this is not the final interview we do. We're going to hopefully have many more opportunities to chat. Um, but there are young women who are 10, 11, 12, maybe in their teens, who come in from humble beginnings, who are searching in terms of their own identity, wondering in this competitive and highly fierce world that we live in, um, what is it out there for me? So my question to you, uh, Shelley, is what advice would you give that young woman who is looking right now at you and saying, I'd like to be like her, but can I, can I achieve that? You know, uh, what, what, what is there out there for me in, the, in this world? Yeah. Uh, thanks, because I feel that you have to own it. It is something that you have to want for yourself. Set out your own goals. No one else's goals. And claim it. I, I believe in the spoken word. I, I want something. I'm going to be this. I am going to achieve this. And don't be afraid to make mistakes along the way. What seemingly is mistakes sometimes aren't. They're learning moments, they're teachable moments, and they're moments, they're growing moments. So for me, coming from humble beginnings, starting quite young, and building my empire, I never thought I would have been the chairman of tourism. I, I always knew that I was just doing a little business and stuff. But Every time you have those challenges and those opportunities, I've always grabbed hold of those opportunities. I've never let anybody tell me that I'm not going to be great at whatever I do. I work hard and give 100% of whatever you're doing. So whatever you do, don't pay attention to the salary, the small this, the small that. Forget about that. You're working for tomorrow. So give your all today to build on tomorrow. And you'd be surprised what is around the corner, what tomorrow holds for you. And I think um, even our hiring of our new CEO that's to come, to see that you have a self-made person, a person, a homegrown girl from Barbados, to take the highest role now um, as a woman in C uh, being a CEO and a, a young girl who started a company that many people didn't understand and it evolved and grew and I grew as a business person and I ended up mar marrying the best man possible, <laughs> the best man in Barbados and then going to this um also having this position so i think sky's the limit don't limit yourself you 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 work hard today for tomorrow shelly williams <laughs> thank you very much an awesome guest on the red couch as we continue to celebrate our women not just in the homes but in business and in every sphere of activity thank you very much shelly williams chair of the BTMI and of course the owner of Platinum Services, the ultimate service in travel in Barbados.